In the late 70s, Harvard student Dan Bricklin was sitting in class bored out of his mind. Little did he know, his daydream about a magic blackboard would give birth to digital spreadsheets, waving goodbye to paper spreadsheets. This invention later evolved into what we now know as Excel, the Swiss army knife of any data analyst today, the software that holds the business world together in the past 40 years, one cell at a time. Now, fast forward to 2024 with AI coming into the picture. This year, 2023 alone has seen GPT-4 and advanced data analysis, GitHub Copilot, adding loads of new features, AI Assistant, Framework for Self-Operating Computer, Microsoft AI Agent, Microsoft Copilot, Gemini, and loads of open source models coming to life. Recently, I've heard a lot of you express concerns and worries about the future of careers in data analytics and data science. Is learning data analytics still worth it? Is it still a viable career, let's say, in the next five years? The answer isn't as straightforward as you might think. And with this video, I hope to share some thoughts and ideas to help you make up your mind. A quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Coursera, who is running an exciting offer, more on them later. Looking back, data analytics has come a long way. Back in 2016, when I started my data analyst job, at the time, very few people really talking about advanced analysis, machine learning, or deep learning. Most companies were still struggling to figure out what the hell to do with the data. You might have come across this data analytics maturity curve, some companies are still just struggling to even understand what's going on in their business, some are more ahead and already have the infrastructure to gather the data and already start building predictive models. An overwhelmingly common reality, no matter where your work lies along this curve, is that you've got to spend a big chunk of your time on anything else but data analysis. Even in a machine learning project, you spend like 7-80% to of your time cleaning and pre-processing data patching data from different sources together rather than doing the creative data detector kind of work. That aside, when I finally finished some analysis and want to show some graphs, my graphs often looked awfully ugly and I would stay late at night tweaking the labels and axes on the graphs. The rest of my time would be spent rushing to write a documentation for the project, which is by all means the most boring task. So I realized that this is really not as sexy as I thought. And what does the job of data analyst or data scientists today look like. Help me clean this data set using the following steps. Hmm. Please make the bars have the same color and the title be bold. What a time to be alive! With AI tools, I genuinely believe that this is going to give data science jobs the chance, for real, to be truly sexy. Imagine this, AI does the grunt work and all the boring tasks, and you, the savvy data analyst, tackle the creative, complex problems, interpret the results, and recommend actions for the business. You're like the Sherlock Holmes of data. I don't know about you, but this is what I would think of as a sexy job. By the way, if you're a complete beginner and looking to gain a certificate in data analytics to jumpstart your career, Coursera is running a discount with $200 off the Coursera Plus annual subscription if you sign up. This is half the regular price for the whole year. If you consider getting this subscription, you can check out the link in the description below to get the $200 discount. This subscription is 14-day money-back guarantee, so if you sign up and you don't like it, you can cancel it within 14 days. With this subscription, you can get access to tons of courses and certificates in data analytics, including the Google Data Analytics and the Google Advanced Data Analytics certificates. These certificates teach you all the fundamentals you need as a beginner in data analytics. So check out the offer below. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Will AI replace data analysts? Can it fully automate our jobs? It's not so black and white. Economists believe that automation does two opposite things simultaneously. It steals tasks from humans while also creating new tasks for humans. And since the job is a collection of multiple tasks, automation eventually changes the task content of a job. As we just mentioned earlier, 
the repetitive and routine tasks like querying data, cleaning, and simple exploratory analysis can now easily be done by GPT-4. So human analysts can now focus on the more creative, more nuanced tasks that require deeper understanding of the world and the social skills. To me, it seems like AI won't fully replace analysts in a foreseeable future, but human analysts will need to learn to collaborate with AI to optimize his job. Just like the invention of digital spreadsheet didn't replace accountants, it transformed them. Since the release of Microsoft Excel, the number of bookkeepers and accounting clerks has dropped significantly. However, the number of accountants, auditors, and financial managers has generally increased. The big, really big accounting service firms like the big four companies are still thriving rather than going bankrupt yesterday. That's why I still get to keep my day job. But let's not paint an overly optimistic picture. The effect of AI automation on jobs is still not yet clear. It all depends on whether the new tasks that get created outspace the old ones or the other way around. A research paper that studies the effects of technology on labor demand points out that in the four decades following the World War II, there was plenty of automation, but this was accompanied by the introduction of new tasks. So labor demand was not decreased due to technology. However, over the last 30 years, labor demand growth has actually slowed down. This is due to the consistent productivity growth thanks to the rapid automation and AI, and also that the loss of labor-intensive tasks has not been counterbalanced by the creation of new tasks. This is a very interesting research paper, and it actually surprised me. I've linked it below if you're interested reading. The question is, will this general pattern also apply to the data analyst jobs? Personally, I think less likely. Millions of companies out there have never been able to utilize their data properly and still vying for analysts who can come in and use the data or at least figure out how to do that in a smart way with AI. For larger, larger companies that already have the infrastructure in place to really utilize data well, they will still find it hard to automate data jobs. From my experience, any jobs around using data are usually subject to a lot of ethical issues, data sensitivity, data privacy issues. So there are a lot of things going on rather than just number crunching. These topics are only getting more and more important and more complex in the future. So to be honest, I think at least in the next three to five years, I don't see how all these different aspects can easily be automated effectively with the AI tools that we see today. However, I do believe that we will see less jobs that only focus on number crunching, like data cleaning, writing SQL queries kind of jobs, and more jobs that require more high-level skills, from coming up with the business use case for data, connecting different pieces of information together from different sources, draw insights and drive actions for the business, knowledge on data regulations to make sure your company is not getting in trouble, coordinating different analysis efforts and communication with stakeholders, and tell a compelling story with data. This leads me to another point domain expertise is going to be very important. Data jobs are valuable, not because we use fancy machine learning techniques or programming tools, but because of the business value that they create. Data analysis is nothing without context. Data analysis is just a means to an end. So I genuinely believe that domain knowledge would help tremendously with finding your place in the job market or in your current position, even when technical skills like programming and data analysis are going to be automated away. So if you happen to be in the middle of a career that's totally unrelated to data analysis, I think this is going to be one of the best times to acquire the data skills. I've met lawyers who jumped into learning about data privacy and AI regulations and became experts in this field. I've met GPs and doctors who became experts in using public health data to do analysis and raise awareness in certain healthcare domains. I've also met someone who works in a concrete production company who created machine learning models to find the formula for the best concrete mix. So it's really fascinating how valuable domain knowledge can be. So don't take for granted any work experience and knowledge that you got somewhere else. Sometimes it can be your best selling point for a career in data analytics today. One problem you may face as a beginner is to learn all the basics in data science. You may also be a bit older 
career and going back to college is not really an option anymore, but the world is very different today. I feel like AI is lowering the entry barrier for beginners in data science. Things that took years to learn in the past, at least in my case, for the basics of programming, some machine learning and deep learning, now takes much less time thanks to ChatGPT. Hello there. It seems like you might have a question or something you'd like to discuss. Yes, I have a question. Um, what is a lambda function in Python? A lambda function in Python is a small, anonymous function defined with the lambda keyword. It's useful for creating simple functions on the fly without needing the usual def keyword and function name. And not only is faster to learn the theories, but also the AI tools can help you very quickly build a data analysis project for your personal portfolio. You can scrape the data faster, code faster, solve problems faster, present the results much more nicely. So it's just generally much easier to create an impressive and interesting project nowadays with the help of AI. A study showed that AI tools help the least skilled and accomplished workers the most, decreasing the performance gap between employees. So in other words, the beginner data analyst will get much better and the more seasoned analysts will simply get a little faster. If you're not sure where you are with your level, you can quiz your skills with ChatGPT to understand what you are still missing. I think today it's very hard to say, I don't know where to start anymore as a beginner. Also, I think it's hard to find an excuse for having a bad resume. If you can improve it or rewrite it using ChatGPT in just 10 seconds. So all in all, I see a lot of opportunities for entry for beginners in data analytics, especially when the role of AI in a data analytics team today is not yet established. Companies are still finding ways to adopt the technology and playbook is not yet available. Regulations are not clear. And above all, the AI tools are also not yet grounded or reliable enough to replace human and analysts fully. So looking ahead in 2024, is learning data analytics still worth it? I'd say yes. I still encourage you to get into data analytics if you enjoy working with data and making a difference in the world with your skills. The jobs might look very different than they are today, just like comparing today's data analysis tools with the first spreadsheets, but I believe the job will only become more interesting. The key to thriving in this career is adaptability. Asking if it's still worth it is like asking asking if it's still worth learning to drive when self-driving cars are around. The journey is half the fun and the destination limitless possibilities. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Bye bye.